In the past two shows, we've shown you how a fiscal cliff deal at the beginning of the year changed the tax landscape for farmers and ranchers. Our first interviews with Tina Barrett covered modifications to depreciation and capital gains. This week, Tina explains changes to the estate tax, which starts by featuring an overall rate increase. So there's a graduated scale, but it goes very quickly up to the top rate, and they move that from 35 to 40, but a pretty easy uh, concession for, for getting a, a extension of the $5 million level on a permanent right. basis. What does permanent mean? Yeah, here? it's a good question because permanent, <laughs> they, there's no expiration date on it. A lot of times what we've dealt with in the last couple of years is mm -hmm. we've got a two-year extension and then it expires and they have to act in order to change it. Well, this is a forever law until they change it. So um, it, it, it's going to take an act of Congress to change it. Uh, which is a much bigger difference and a much better planning tool for what we've got to deal with. As in, at the end of 2012, it would have rolled into something else, but Ex now there has to be legislation to actually change exactly. something Exactly. So, okay. yeah, instead of having this, uh, you know, whether you want to call it a fiscal cliff or whatever, instead of having something right. that we're going to fall off of and it's going to go back to a million, that's gone. The million dollars is, is no longer part of law. The five plus somewhere around five million dollar exemption, that's also adjusted for inflation? It is. So 2012 it went to 5.12 mm -hmm. million and there'll be an, another index for, right. for 13 and that'll be go on. So we shouldn't run into this problem again where we inflation out of out of a reasonable window. The limit for gifting? Stayed at five million as okay. well. So you have five million dollars in gifting in your life. Now that if you do gift five million dollars mm -hmm. away, that takes away your five million dollar exclusion. Okay. So, you know, if you give, basically can give away $5 million worth of assets in your lifetime or after you're gone, either way, but it's still $5 million. Yeah, this stuff is a little, a little complicated. I don't like numbers at all. <laughs> but uh, who needs to start planning for this yeah. and how? So, you know, planning is going to start. I, and, you know, we've been kind of putting off and holding this for three years now, not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if you're married and your estate is over $10 million or you're single mm -hmm. and it's $5 million, now's the time that you probably should start looking at doing some good estate planning with an attorney and accountant and getting those kinds of things done so that we can come up with some strategies to lower the value of your estate. If you're married and, and it's over five million, it's a good idea to take a look at how things are titled, make sure that we have assets in both spouses' names so that we don't end up with one spouse passing away mm -hmm. with six million dollars of assets right. in their name and the other spouse having nothing. So, so are, is there something that you tell people to look at specifically when they're trying to, to, you know, when they're going into an estate lawyer or something like that? You know, I, there's a lot of people who have the ultimate solution. Certainly, you know, sure. there's a lot of life insurance salesmen out there who think that's the answer for funding this. Um, there's, you know, uh, we can get real complicated with entities and, and different ways to break mm -hmm. up the estate, which lowers the value. Um, so it's a matter of, of having somebody that you trust that's reasonable involved that um, can help you find the right balance of, of complication and expense to, to make this work for you. You can still uh, transfer to the spouse something called portability, correct? Right. They, it's something they put in the law in 2010 and they've put back in this law and, and it's again permanent mm -hmm. without action. Um, and so uh, what that allows you to do is if a spouse passes away, you're the first to die and maybe has two million dollars of of net worth, mm -hmm. the three million dollars that they left on the table could be elected to be added to the surviving spouses so they could have an eight million dollar exemption. So this works really good if you didn't get to planning right away and the spouse without a lot of assets in their name dies first, but we don't want to do that because it could go the other way. Or it also works really well so just what we've experienced in the last few years with land values, you know, and if maybe you're not in an estate tax issue right now, but if values and continue to increase or doubled again, the surviving spouse might have a problem. And so these are federal. These are federal laws, right? right. So um, Nebraska, we still don't have any estate tax, but there are county inheritance taxes which haven't changed, um, and may end up being something that's a bigger issue for a lot of people than the federal estate tax.